Hey, it's ACAP. Today you're going to learn how to do advanced routing and organization in Logic and your Vienna Ensemble Pro server project template. If you haven't watched my previous two VE Pro videos, you should do that first because this video builds upon that previous knowledge. I've created a playlist of all my VE Pro tutorials, just like I've done for my Logic tutorials, and you can find that in the description. You should route and name your buses so that your templates are easy to use, not so that they are easy to set up. You'll understand this if you've ever coded anything. Most code is written once and read many times, so good use of comments makes it much easier for anyone who reads it to understand it, whether that be you or someone else. It may take a little extra time, but it's worth it in the long run. Create a new instance, then name and color it. Before you start making your instrument buses, create extra buses for each output you want to be able to use in VE Pro and Logic, and name them the way you'll name your contact outputs. You'll name your logic aux tracks the same way too. Start the outputs of those new buses at channel 3-4. I'm going to use folders for organization. Now you'll be able to route all the VE Pro auxes of the instrument plugin buses to the output buses you just made. Since they are named, you don't have to remember which outputs the highs or lows should be sent to. I'm going to create three new folders. One of them is for all the Cine strings and the other two are for the two ports that we're going to create later. One of them is for the high strings and cellos, and the other one is for double basses. I'm going to color each of them differently. You can do this however you like, and then drop the instruments folders into the Cine strings folder. Next, we'll create some instrument buses. I like to leave the first stereo channel set empty, but that's just me. Although you can set up your channels however it makes sense to you, I recommend following this tutorial exactly the first time you go through it. Once you understand it and get everything working on your end, I encourage you to tweak and experiment to see what works best for your needs. Make sure you name and route your contact auxes the same way you did your initial VE Pro buses. Then, the names of the VE Pro auxes can describe more specifically the instruments that are being sent to that aux. You'll see that before renaming, the default aux names are derived from the bus itself. You don't have to split your instrument groups this deep. In my own template, I only have high strings and low strings, for example. I currently don't split up the shorts and longs, although I used to. I'm only doing it this way right now for the sake of example. After you finish this tutorial, you can decide for yourself what level of control you want before you build your own template. Just consider that the more auxes you create here, the more auxes that will be in logic, which means a higher CPU load. Now, you can easily route your auxes to the named output buses you made earlier. My double basses didn't fit in the first port, so I'm going to make a new instrument bus for them. I'm going to set up the double bass port pretty much the same way that I set up the other strings, so this is mostly review. After you get your contact plugin, just make sure you change port 1 to port 2. I'm going to load a multi that I've saved before and just make sure your outputs are labeled the same way that they were on your VE Pro output buses. I only need to use the low string outputs, so I'm only going to make two auxes instead of four. VE Pro increments the aux inputs automatically starting from the second channel, so I need to manually change those inputs to four and five. Go ahead and open up Logic and we're going to do a few steps to prepare to connect Logic and VE Pro, kind of like what we did in the past couple tutorials. Create a software instrument track with the same name and color as your VE Pro instance. Now load the VE Pro plugin, the multi-output plugin, and connect to your instance. You only need to use one buffer if VE Pro and Logic are on the same computer. Now you can create your auxes, the same number that you had in VE Pro for your output buses. Mirror this setup in Logic by leaving the output of the VE Pro plugin track empty and using the auxes for the input of the VE Pro output buses you created earlier, starting at channel 3, 4, and for outputting to your monitor bus. In the same way as before, the name of the VE Pro plugin track can generally describe the instruments it connects to, while the auxes can describe more specifically what is being sent to each bus. I'm not going to go through the whole process of setting up monitor and reverb buses but I'll show you how you can get started. I did go over that a little bit in a previous video. 
Just be careful that when you're creating sequential outputs, Logic will put the buses out of order, but the aux is in order. So I realized that I was actually labeling bus two instead of bus one earlier, uh, but I'll fix that later. Let's now create 20 new external MIDI tracks. You're going to have to create 16 and then an additional four and open up the environment. Navigate to the MIDI instrument layer and let's rename this multi what our first port is going to be, the high strings and the cellos. Drag it onto the first 16 MIDI tracks and create a new multi for the double basses. I only have four patches, so I'm just going to activate the first four channels. Name it and then do the same, drag it to the bottom four tracks. Let's start with a summing transformer, just a regular transformer, don't change anything, and duplicate that so you can make the first port. Open up the settings for the port. Choose copy matching events and apply operation in reverse order. Fix control for status. Data byte one is fixed at 99 and data byte two tells you what port you're using. And it's zero based, so zero is the first port. And just duplicate that transformer and all you have to change for port two is data byte two, change it to one, and that's the second port. Cable everything together. And both ports go to the summing transformer. And now we need the VE Pro plugin track, or at least this is going to make it a lot easier to work with. So just open up a new environment window to drag it over to the new layer. and connect the summing transformer to the strings track. Let's color everything so it stays consistent. And make sure the VE Pro plugin track MIDI channel is set to all. It usually is by default, but doing those steps we just did sometimes can make logic change it on its own. I just put everything in a folder and made it all the same color as the instance. I'm going to name the track folder and create an external MIDI track with no output and the name as a space so I can use it as a separator between other folders. And now let's name all the tracks. Now create a 16-part multi-timbral instrument track. And I'm just moving that separator. And let's load some instruments. I'm just going to load the same string multi I had before. You can load whatever you want here. But we're going to use the same principles that we used in VE Pro and in Logic to set up our outputs and auxes. I'm naming the software instrument track and creating auxes based off that. And you can leave the first stereo channel set empty, set to no output. It looks like I forgot to do that earlier with the strings, but it's no big deal. There's no sound coming through those channels anyway. It's more of a visual separator for me. And again, just be careful that you're naming the correct aux track when you create sequential outputs. Unfortunately, in Logic, you cannot create sequential sends. Those you have to do one at a time. Just like before, name the auxes the same way and keep it the same color. And I'm just going to do these reverb sends just for sake of example.
Just like before, I'm making a folder out of all those tracks and again, changing the color of the external MIDI tracks and folder. Aside from the basic organizational idea of general and specific track naming, the default name of the last track of a multi timbral software instrument track is affected by the name of the software instrument track itself. If you like to leave empty tracks available in your template so that you have room to grow, it's nice for those tracks to at least reflect the general instrument groups that would be used in that instrument track. The default name of MIDI tracks connected to an environment multi instrument is the name of the multi. To get the next sequential external MIDI track, use Control Return. And to get a duplicate that uses the same MIDI channel, use Control Shift Return. It's recommended that you load contact instruments prior to play instruments in your VE Pro server project template. Since VE Pro will load your instances in order from left to right, make sure all your contact instruments are loaded in the first few instances on the left. Then, any instances that hold play instruments should be on the right of any contact instances. In addition to hosting your instruments, VE Pro is also great for pre-mixing in case you have libraries that vary widely in volume. You can also add effects, such as reverb, if you need to balance a particularly dry library with one that has a little more natural room sound baked in. Let's create a new bus in VE Pro and move it outside of all the other folders and add a contact plugin to it. If you're using instrument banks in contact, try not to load too many banks per contact plugin. You might think that since they only require one MIDI channel, you can load 16 to make the most use of the resources that would be required to run a contact plugin. However, loading too many instrument banks puts a lot more strain on contact than loading individual patches, and you may experience glitches, hiccups, or stuck notes. For that reason, it's probably safest to only use one instrument bank per contact. If you want, you can try to push the limits and see how many banks and how many instruments you can load in each bank, but if you're building a template, just stick with one. Here's what it would look like in VE Pro if you didn't use good colors, naming, and folders. There are fewer tracks, but you have to think a little to remember what things are and where they are going. This gets more and more difficult the larger your instance and template become. Compare that to the completed version of the well-organized template. Although there are more tracks to look at, it's much easier on the eye, and you'll be able to modify, add, delete, and reroute no matter how long it's been since the last time you updated your template. All of my previous videos now have PDFs to go along with the tutorial. I've also combined all the logic PDFs into one giant PDF that you can get all at once and I've put a link to that in the description as well as on my channel page. I've done the same thing for all the VE Pro PDFs. The PDFs that you'll find in those combined ones will be the same as in the playlist for Logic Tutorials and the VE Pro Tutorials playlist. Because I've already had a couple requests for it, I've put a one-time donation link in the description of every video. Although it's a PayPal link, you don't actually have to have a PayPal account to use it. I recently released the soundtrack to my first feature film, and I've created a preview video for it on my main channel. I've put those links in the description as well. Just like with Task Attack, if you have any questions about the music of the film, please ask it in the comments on the soundtrack preview video. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more tutorials, subscribe and hit the bell icon. Check the description for more info, leave a comment if you need clarification, and please share if you think this can be helpful to someone else. Until next time, stay tuned.